What's up guys, it's Track. We're doing a review of this. This is the new Pulsar Pro. We got a lot of information back when we did the Nebula Pro. Yes, this appears to be some sort of sneaky pro line water gel BB blaster. And this one seems, as opposed to the Nebula Pro, which is just like a really interesting value proposition, taking water BB blasting and delivering it almost Aeon Pro style at that $25 point. This one's full electronic and seems to be designed specifically to compete with like the Splatterball and all of its other competitors, either on Amazon or through different uh, distributions. But uh, clearly Walmart has decided that this is a category that they want to enter. And they're doing that through this line, the Pulsar Pro being the flagship. These are the only two that I've seen online being the Pulsar Pro and the Nebula Pro. Now this one comes in at $85. So I want to be very clear. It is far more expensive than the Nebula Pro, but far cheaper than your uh, average splatter ball. And that's clearly what it's designed to compete with. So it comes with 5,000 gel tech beads, which are gel BBs. They're all pretty standard. I've gone ahead and pre-hydrated a few of them for the purposes of this review, along with charging the included Lion battery fully. It says that it's got velocity up to 250 FPS. It says that it's full auto because all of these things seem to be using some sort of AEG box. Comes with a USB charger. I think this is a Lion, not a LiPo pack. You've got a storage container for your gel BBs. You've got plenty of ammo to play with this before you need a reload. And it comes with a 500 round magazine that looks almost P-round-esque. Now, it looks like this has full select fire, uh, full auto, or full auto F single F as safety. So I guess full single, or probably more likely a fire mode single. Now it's claiming a rate of fire of eight gel BBs per second and it comes with included eye protection that looks to be significantly nicer than the average generic stuff. So I'm not gonna fool with wearing that. This definitely appears to be with the Z here uh, to be compatible with a lot of a uh, dart zone-esque stuff. I'm gonna be real, the tie-dye job on this, it's pretty serious, pretty cool. Uh, whatever, I guess, hydro or, or printing techniques they've come up with here is pretty solid. A few interesting things going on here, one of which being that this is definitely an in-strike attachment point on the stock, kind of wild. And then this adapter turns in-strike into buffer tube, allowing you to use these. So there's gonna be a lot of cross compatibility here in terms of accessories of this part in particular, uh, I haven't seen from a domestic manufacturer. I've only seen it from like worker and such before. The grip itself is quite comfy. One note about how it's being produced. And uh, this is just someone who's done a lot of hydrographics can tell you that if they're doing this as a slide decal or as hydrographics, you can see these tears here where the indents are and you can see that here and here. I'm not sure if that means that they're doing this, uh, whatever the automated process by which they're doing this is not as a, uh, not as robust as doing it by hand, you can avoid a lot of mistakes like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, take a look. It is a Lion battery, but what is interesting here is that it's an XT30 connector. Would have been nicer to see this as an XT60, uh, but you can actually buy adapters for XT60 to XT30. So uh, continuing with uh, clearly what they were learning, you've got some modularity there. This is also just very sharp, this out and in for the battery tray that becomes a really comfortable grip. Not bad. Trigger pull feels pretty good. Selector switch is for righty, uh, right handers only, but is quite comfortable. Then you've got a mag release here. The extended magazine release geometry following the lines of the shell feels very hobby-esque to me. I don't know what else to say about it, but we've got it plugged in. Let's go ahead. Not bad, let's see how it performs. In order to do that, we gotta get this monster magazine out. This is pretty serious, aside from some of the drum mags I've seen out there. This is some really, uh, really high capacity stuff. Now, how do I open it? Looks like this panel slides here. Let's go ahead and drain off all of our excess water, or as much of it as we possibly can. Oh no, we're losing gel BBs. Gotta be super careful here. And a fun fact about these, as I'm learning more and more about hydrating these rounds, I actually hydrated these like three days ago and they've just been sitting fully submerged. So the, uh, the staying power of them is quite good. And this is a full packet, so it should load the magazine fully once, hopefully. Looks like a caviar or something. I can't get over this stuff. It's got a really, interesting just kind of tactile property as far as ammo goes so that's 
more or less fully loaded. There's a drainage hole down there so the water falls out, assuming you overfill it on any level. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Got a work order sign down here. We should be able to uh, hit up with some single fire shots. We'll leave this fully extended. Uh, we need a second for it to uh, populate the rounds through the magazine and in. There we go. All right, and And your pretty traditional accuracy through volume, I mean, this target is only about 40 feet away, uh, but once you switch into full auto, you're guaranteed to hit what you're aiming at. Let's come over here to the chronograph and just see what our FPS is. They're claiming, again, that they believe this is gonna hit 200 FPS or up to 200 FPS. Let's see if that's bold or conservative. Uh, keep in mind your average performance grade caliber is about 225, 230. So let's put a couple rounds over in single fire mode. Errors, exciting. 208, 202, 178, 142, 202, 209, 199, 200, 204, 203, 210, 204. That's pretty definitively right at about that 200 FPS mark, right? As far as uh, the overall range performance, I mean, if we head down to the end of the, the yard here, we're getting uh, double that distance to the target and we have a serious wind. I'm sure that you guys can hear it because I don't have my socket on right now coming directly towards me, which affects rounds like this pretty dramatically. And with a slight angle, we're still breaking 80 foot ranges. Now the drop off on this is pretty significant. I'm gonna go ahead and pepper this target one more time. I can like feel the mist off of the rounds. You can see it as it gently coats the, uh, the pseudo suppressor in here. Sort of cool. I mean, again, significantly less expensive than other uh, gel blaster products that do the full auto thing. You've got a lot of fun accessories. This is a fully modular flip up, flip down kind of sight. Uh, everything on this rail runs up and down. The stocks alone being compatible with virtually anything else you have in your blaster armory by virtue of the buffer tube and the in strike attachment point is good. This stock itself is actually pretty seriously sturdy. I'm putting a lot of weight onto it right there and it feels good. Select fire switch is convenient and ergonomic. I can't think of a whole lot to do to this to make it better just because of how you know these products are designed and how they work. But overall, I mean, I'd be pretty pleased with this as a primary class blaster for 85. Uh, it's hard to say if I wouldn't rather have three Nebula Pros and like a, a battle with my buddies. Uh, but in a world where you want something that definitely overpowers the Nebula, I think that this is a pretty serious contender. And it's, it's just interesting. I mean, this product category alone, like there's nothing really in Dart Blaster world or realistically outside of like airsoft and paintball that does the kind of kind of effect. And the fact that it comes with so much ammo and the ammo is so incredibly uh, inexpensive means that you don't really have to care that when you hit things, you know, they just kind of atomize. Oh, that's fun. That's a cool kind of effect here. And so you can see actually, interestingly enough, this is what the ammo looks like after it's shattered, right? It kind of pellets into this sort of uh, sort of polymer that'll dehydrate. And uh, once it's dehydrated, it becomes next to nothing. It can rehydrate again, so you have to be a little careful about that. But playing outdoors, I haven't noticed any uh, adverse effects on the grass or lawn or anything like that. Uh, so overall, that's a look at the Pulsar Pro, part of the Hydro Strike line. Time will tell if this sticks around at Walmart, how it, uh, how it develops and what becomes of it. I think that the tie-dye hydro dip is really, really cool. I think that it needs a little bit of tweaking in some of the problem areas. I think that the performance is certainly on par, if not, you know, equivalent or better than, uh, than some of the Chinese versions of this category of like AEG full auto gel blaster product. But I think this one's solid. I like that you could tell that there's a lot of Dart Zone Pro kind of design language in it. And I think that it's a solid offering overall if you're already entering this category if you're pretty hard lined onto nerf or pretty hard lined onto airsoft this is somewhere kind of in the in between and it's a it's still a, an interesting fit a weird sell in that regard but i'm still looking for the gel blaster war that i can kind of create an entire loadout for and head out to so if you guys know of any sort of large scale gel blaster wars in north america let me know in the comment section down below much love blast on drag out